Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Applier, and we are back with the uh, the fifth round. After you know, I thought it was going to be like ten minutes, and then um, Altergeist versus Cyframe Mech Knight happened. Uh, we're here with the cameraman. Let's see if he can. He's just barely out of frame there. Uh, he's having a quick uh, a quick gallon of coffee before getting back to his daily job of spending eight hours waiting for a Valorant drop. Hey, uh, hey, I it worked. <laughs> he got it. He left. He left. Uh, what's his name? Um, Summit. Yeah, he he left Summit on all night. Yeah, I did it actually. Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, uh, this round we have a very interesting match for the pair of you. Uh, the pair of you for all of you. Um, there's two individuals. The pair of which I think you will enjoy watching the match of. Um, so Cyber VX, uh, Jeff Leonard's, uh, Jeff Leonard's son, uh, is currently undefeated, as is Kuro Kaze, who is on Lunalite, one of three Lunalite players, they're the remaining undefeated individual, uh, so we are gonna take a quick look at their game, and see if we can't see what Lunalite can do in a world without Tiger. Um, not exactly sure, uh, but I'm excited to find out. So, here is the match, and, uh, I, I don't know how much depends on the, uh, the die roll. I think probably a lot. Um, this Lunalite deck is looking to set up negates. It's not an OTK build, trying to do Raid Raptor shenanigans. Uh, it is a Wise Strix deck, and, uh, Eldritch needs no introduction. Uh, we've seen a couple of them over the course of the tournament. I want to see if we can't get an Ad Emancipator for the last round, because there's a couple individuals doing very well on that as well, even though we've only featured the one, the FTK, and it did very, very ter terribly. Uh, yeah, drops are enabled, so um, if you watch, if you leave this stream on, you might find yourself with a copy of Edo Pro in your inbox. Alright, so Eldlich, the Golden Lord, uh... Has made it onto the field. It looks like Cyber VX uh, has, in fact, won the die roll. Lightning Storm out of Kurokazi. I mean, Lightning Storm is fine against Eldlich. You know, it's okay, but it's not fantastic because so many of their traps are chainable, like Eldlixer of Scarlet Sanguine. Uh, it's going to be able to summon an Eldlich or any zombie from deck, but of course, Eldlich is going to be the target. And, oh, I guess it mattered a lot. Uh, Cyber VX is on main deck summon limit. Yeah, I could see why getting rid of that would be critical to success. So now they have no interaction, at least for this turn, even though they're going to be able to replenish a lot of this. I'm excited to see what happens. So we're going to lead with the Foolish Burial Goods. That's about as good as it gets. We can send a copy of uh, Lunalite Perfume or Serenade Dance to the graveyard. Either of those would be absolutely broken, and Serenade Dance is the pick. You can banish this card from your graveyard and send a card from your hand to the graveyard, a special Lunalite monster from your deck. Uh, that's balanced, right? All right, Kaleido Chick makes its way onto the board, and who needs Tiger after all? Kaleido Chick is just an absolutely insane card. You can send a Lunalite from your deck or extra to the graveyard and change this card's name to that card. The card they've sent is Purple Butterfly, which they're going to banish to the graveyard to special an Emerald Bird from hand, likely just the one that they care about sticking in the graveyard the least, and as expected, discarding a Yellow Martin from hand in the process, probably the only reason you would summon the Emerald Bird. All right, next comes the Force Strike. And the four Strix is going to be met with an Ash Blossom. That's unfortunate. Oh boy. I don't know if Kurokazi is going to be able to beat that. Uh, Serenade Dance is a good way to do so. I guess, you know, if one of those was going to be negated, he'd much prefer that it's the Search and not the Summon. <laughs> Are people already tired of Eldlish, says chat. Remember, uh, to highlight your response. And Kaleido Chick making its way back onto the board. Well, thankfully... Thankfully, Kaleido Chick's effect is a hard once per turn. And I am talking, of course, about the second effect that is a hard once per turn. The first, of course, is soft and sends for cost. Very fun. So he's going to send a Panther Dancer to the graveyard. What I like about Kurokaze's deck is while it is uh, built to build powerful boards, it still has the capacity to OTK if it's, op its opponents end on something as unformidable as a uh, Double Eldritch. 
Imagine being on a date and then you pull a condom out of an MBT fanny pack. Uh, yeah, folks. Uh, just so you all know, um, the Streamlabs merch site, I put the fanny pack up because I thought it was hilarious that you could make a fanny pack and sell it on Streamlabs. You know, I don't expect any of you to actually <laughs> buy the fanny pack. <laughs> Alright, we're going to activate the Elixir of Black Awakening. This is going to get a Golden Land Trap from the deck to the field. And uh, not, a, not a great setup. Looks like that Ash Blossom did in fact just end the turn out of Kurakaze. And we're going to banish this copy of Scarlet Sanguine. So we get both a Haketo and a Conquistador. And here's where you go into Lebo, right? The third Eldlich in opener. Whoa, this is a bit of a brick out of Cyber VX, but uh, it's it's turned out okay. He's going to go ahead and activate the effect of Eldlich. I, I think this is the end of the game, provided he's on Liba in the extra. Uh, should be able to overlay for Liba, or is this lethal anyway? You can just get in for... Oh yeah, this is a uh, 21 plus 5,000, that'll put him at 900, and then in main phase 2, of course, we can just make Gustav max, unless that card in hand is exactly infinite in permanence, he's won the game right here. Yep, that's gonna be it. Wow, and a, a an extremely quick game one out of the blisteringly slow control deck. I wish we could see more like that. Uh, why did the Eldritch games have to go into a 35-minute game three against Cyframe when uh, that was always an option? All right, so in the sideboards, um, I think both players are pretty pretty sure what they're going to be boarding here. If you're Kurakaze, you know what your opponent's control spells do and how you can beat them. If you are Cyber VX, you want to be boarding into hand traps provided your opponent goes first. Um, I'm talking about things like DD Crow, Nibiru, um, Ash Blossom still seems pretty good, Infinite Impermanence, basically anything to stop... Uh, Lunalite in its tracks. Uh, Infinite Impermanence, previously not very powerful because of the way Lunalite Kaleido Chick worked, but without Tiger, it actually represents a negation. And it looks like Kurakaze has let Eldlich go first, uh, leading with a magical meltdown, which of course will turn into an A lister. Wow. I need a dad hat with piss gang on it, says Peeps. No, not gonna do that. All right, we are going into uh, the Al Mirage, and I think the Secure Garden afterwards. Yep, then we can fire off the Invocation for a Macaba. And then we'll activate the Invocation's effect in Graveyard to put this A-lister back into our hand. Well, if that's the whole turn, that's very beatable. What's unfortunate is the cards that uh, Cyber VX would be boarding into going second are also powerful going first. Like the hand traps that would be stopping Cyber VX are still quite strong. An Ash Blossom here, uh, in a uh, set infinite impermanence there. Yeah, and there's the Ash Blossom in response to the uh, Allure of Darkness. Uh, that's a weird one to Ash Blossom, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Foolish Burial Goods activating now, probably sending the Serenade Dance or the Lunalite Perfume. Of course, the two good targets in the deck. And uh, it is Serenade Dance, which we will, I expect, activate momentarily. Ooh, but not before a Lightning Storm. That's gotta prompt the Macabre here. Oh, he did not have the spell negate, and the summon limit goes to the graveyard. Wow, Kurakaze has really lucked out in that uh, they haven't had to deal with that at all yet. Discarding a Lunalite Purple Butterfly again for a Kaleido Chick. The Kaleido Chick activation, I think, will send a powerful card to the graveyard. Really kind of questionable if that's the card you want to banish, because, of course, uh, it sends for cost. 
you know, still, if they send something like a panther dancer, it's probably better to banish that than not to. I spent all my rent and grocery money on MBT fanny packs. Was that a good investment chat? Absolutely. Hey, if you got your Trump check, make sure to turn all 1,200 of it into MBT fanny packs. All right, so we're going to activate the effect of this is... The, the, yeah, I was going to say, I, I am pretty sure that uh, we are not activating Purple Butterfly here. Oh, are we? We did. That was actually the effect of Purple Butterfly. The double summon effect that you see used never. Okay, so we've got the material for a rank 4 here, but... I mean, there is still a Macaba on the field. There's really no way to get rid of it. Gonna pull out my piss gang dad hat for my MBT fanny. Please stop. <laughs> Alright, so here's the Force tricks, and that's a fantastic target for the Macaba. I think we're likely to see that activated here. Yep. What is the last card in your hand, Kurakaze? It's got to be really good. Uh, that, whatever it is, that's not good enough. All right, Conquistador is going to trigger at end step. Uh, and I think that's the only one, but it should be enough. Scarlet Sanguine is such a powerful card. And we'll activate uh, Scarlet Sanguine at earliest possible opportunity. Unfortunately, this is a 9 and a 10, so we won't be able to immediately go to uh, Liba and Gustav Max, but still, 5,000 is nothing to sniff at. All right, we'll set one and pass, it looks like. Ah, man, this is kind of hard. I mean, I, I can't imagine how Lunalite is going to play through this, you know? Um, if that set card is a Floodgate, it's over. If that set card is uh, any piece of interaction, it's over. Most of Lunalite's combos require two cards. Yeah, I don't know. I, ca I can't see this one happening. And CyberVX says, good game, and that's it. Oh, gross. Well, uh, fortunately for both of these players, they're both XO, so it's likely they are both a lock for top eight. Regardless, we'll get to see a little more uh, Lunalite play later on, and hopefully we'll get to see one where the Lunalite player actually gets to do anything.